I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get matched down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. Bill Withers' Ain't No Sunshine is next. Bill Withers' Ain't No Sunshine is the song that is up next. This is a song written and performed by R&B and soul musician Bill Withers. His father was a miner who died when he was only 13 years old. Oh, oh shizzle, shizzle. He joined the Navy at the age of 17. Wow. After leaving the Navy, he got signed to Sussex Records and got his debut album produced by Booker T. Booker T, sorry. Most famous from the group, Booker T and the MGs. This song's studio version features Stephen Stills from Buffalo, Springfield, and Crosby. Stills and Nash playing guitar. This song was originally a B-side, but G DJs preferred playing it over the A-side. It reached number three on the charts and became his first hit. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's do it. What's it called? Ain't? Bill Withers, Ain't No Sunshine. I'm pretty sure I downloaded that one. All right, let's check it out.
Wow. Oh, that's some real I feel shit. like I heard that song as a, like a cover, shit. maybe at some point. Um, I liked the that he did that intro before he started it. Yeah. Where he talked about how wet men and women respond yeah. and say things, and that he said, like when he said, like I wanted to put something out that was just he's gonna forego his uh, his male, male ego. ego. Yeah, I really I like that. I was like, okay. <laughs> you um, know, I, I was like, oh, I heard this song before. This is Nas is a mob deep, mob deep. Remember, I told you rap, like especially yes, that yes. era rap, it was just sampling. Yeah, it was, so. Mob Deep sampled the song, and they called it actually "Ain't No Sunshine." They had him on the chorus. Really, the sample part of that him on the chorus. Really, it was, it was all gang shit. Yeah. Oh, all right, go wow, ahead. Wow. Okay. Um. So, I thought it. So I, I like, oh, another song I'm familiar with that I'm not familiar with at all, and then I, I put it together. It was a Mob Deep song. Go ahead. Like I said, I feel like I must have heard a cover of this at some point. Um, but I thought it was like the guy went higher. Yeah, like he really put himself out here with with uh, with this song. Like, yeah. Um, he really, really put himself out there. Yeah. Not a lot of guys will will, will come out and say say that. And it was really sweet. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And she's always gone too long anytime she goes away. Um, you know, obviously, like, you're thinking that he's probably talking about a breakup. But at the same time, like, I don't know. It, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a breakup. You know what I mean? Like, it could just be... No, you know, it's they, just... They live two, two lives... And whenever she's gone, like, he misses her a lot. <laughs> yeah. And that life is brighter and happier when she's there with him. Yeah. Which is interesting because he's, uh, he's the rock star. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he so yeah. sh really, she should be, but in reality, like, that's the, that's the effect she has on it. Yeah, but, yeah, maybe she hasn't, like... She's not completely codependent, so he's doing his thing and she's doing hers. And no, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. But it is. It's one of those things where it's like women in this culture. Well, I don't know. I almost feel like now girls are now insecure to put out their true feelings about their their boyfriends now or the the men i don't know because it's it's kind of like i don't know like females are being are encouraged to approach relationships and sexuality the way that men do you know what i'm yeah. saying like women are encouraged now to and, and you yeah. know instead of like you know the real practical idea that women control access to sex and men control access to relationships mm -hmm. you know which is a you know sort of post sexual revolution type of you know very bracketed binary understanding of how men and women interact with each other mm -hmm. it is still true mm -hmm. yeah to a large to a large degree yeah. All, but in yeah. this song in this song i just think it's harder especially in black culture it's very hard to like the term simp has been thrown around a bunch even in the yeah. chat like yeah so if you express your if you express like real deep you know it's like being whipped you know people say talk about yeah, oh this guy's simping okay. like like you're like a simpleton a weak guy beta male whatever you wanted to call it okay because you're you your heart on your is on your sleeve relative well, he's to your overly girl. submissive to a female and gains nothing from it yeah again overly submissive to a female and gaining nothing from it because you're supposed to if you're doing something for a female obviously you should get some sort of reciprocity that's the assumption <laughs> which is uh, a pretty crazy assumption um, to have, so, but so overly submissive that other guys cringe and feel ashamed when seeing them. Yeah. That what? <laughs> so overly submissive that other guys cringe and feel ashamed when seeing them. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but 
but anyway, like all, all, all we have all that language and that slang for dudes who overly and openly express their affection for and need for their 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 girl. Yeah, yeah. So if you you know, like we were relentless to each other in high school, relentless. Like you could not publicly, you know, and at the I time. I don't think that's our culture, like here. Yeah, in our the state. Cu- yeah, our cu- Yeah, I mean, it was our definitely our culture, black culture yeah. for sure. We didn't know how to like. We didn't. It's crazy because now, like, I was watching an interview with Jay Z, and now Jay Z is in such a contemplative, very self aware place, and he understands himself and his. And it's like that's great, but when Jay was our big brother role model, he was talking about, you know, but I don't fucking do, you know, take a look at it, you know, me getting my heart to a woman, not for nothing, nothing never, never happened, happened. I'll, I'll be, be forever macking, heart cold like assassin, I got no passion, I got no patience, and I hate what, like, that's, that was the line to me, like, yeah, you know, not for nothing, never happened, but, but the, the next line was heart cold like an assassin, I got no patience, and I hate waiting, so get your ass in, like assassin, get your ass in. It's a oh, pretty good rhyme screen. Yeah. But but the point was like I got no feelings for women. What's interesting, like in the hood, the only real vulnerable affection that we were allowed to show at the time is if your friends died. Like you love your homies, you die for your homies. Yeah. But you would never you never express affection to a woman. So it was this weird kind of dynamic where you could only express real deep love and affection for another man in the context so of some uh, of yeah. gangster shit. Yeah, that's which so is basically throwing your life away for no reason. Well, but why, like, then why are you so much ass- like that? Well, because I never cared about any of that shit. I don't care what people think about me. You know how you know how I am. Yeah, but <laughs> you said when you were back in that, you didn't go around saying all kinds of stuff, right? Well, that's because I didn't love them girls like that. If that I did, one you did. If, nah, not like like you. <laughs> no, not like I love you. Not the same, but. <laughs> no, no. But anyway, it, it's just it's just a very it's it's a very fascinating. Um, uh, hmm. Yeah, if I'd have had you in high school for sure, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have been the same way. You, know you would have said it out loud. Of course. That's interesting. I just thought that you were in a certain culture box at that time. I was wearing and nail that you've polish. matured out of it. I was wearing nail polish and had corn and all this shit in my backpack yeah. in the Bronx, New York. And it wasn't black nail polish all the time. Sometimes I'd have red nail polish. Like, I yeah, would do shit on purpose. Just yes, like, no, I understand that. But that, to me, still all fits in that box. Like, you have oh, to maintain no. a certain level of no, hardness. No, so no, you're no, going to no. paint your nails if you want to do that and let it, let somebody say something. No, no, no. It was, that wasn't the dynamic at all. Like, because nobody, like, wanted to hurt me for doing that. Like, I wasn't, like, putting out a threat. It was just, like, everybody has, like, a contrary opinion. But it was one of those things where it was never going to get physical, but it was a psychological aspect of, oh, my God, you're wearing red nail ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything didn't go down, especially with me. Like, I wasn't red? a physical You part- wore red? Oh, nail ball? Yeah. Sometimes I'd red, red and black. I'd alternate, whatever. I, I just truly didn't care. Honestly, you would have very much enjoyed my nail stuff that I was doing as a teenager. I would have painted you an electric yeah, car. Yeah, just... So, I... But, but it's crazy, like... That was me saying, ah, but I would, I, I never even thought to express that kind of affection for a woman. Like, not, not because of like the pressure, but just because that was just my mindset. Like I was, I, I was cold blooded. Nobody taught me, you know, I'm not making excuses for myself. But I mean, you know, I mean, you know how I get. So, you know, so that was kind of like the, the mentality, but. Yeah, I think I wouldn't even allowed myself to get to the point where uh, 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 that would have been the only thing that could have screwed me and you up like early, early, like because I would have, I would have like fell hard for you really fast. So it would have been like, a, yo, think you're gonna let a girl have this much control over you? That's an internal thing, you know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, like I would never even let myself get there. Like my understanding of engaging women was like the less actual feelings you had for them. Like the better, because that was, that was just what we knew. 
Wow. That's what we heard, you know, like all the people that were influential were like, we were, it was all, you can't turn her home into a housewife and all this other shit and, you know, you can't give your affections and look how dumb you are. And even big, like when he's beefing with Tupac, you know, and, and Tupac's like, ah, I fucked your girl. And, and, Tup- and Biggie's like, gotta go, Coolio. You know, and then the next line, I mean, it's getting too hot, but if Faith had twins, she'd probably have two pox. So that was also really interesting to me. It's like, yo, this girl, you married her. She slept with this guy who's your rival, who's your worst enemy. And your response is to say, your response is to say, I care so little about this woman that I will agree in public that she probably did have sex with you. That's how little she means to me. Like, that was the craziest... Like, but do you think he really felt that? That had way more impact on me than Jay-Z. Than the, the Jay-Z and all the video vixens and all the rest of it. All the black women being objectified. That line from Biggie, to me, had the most impact on how you're supposed to engage women. Even if you marry them, wow. you care so little... That you will be public, you're fine with publicly saying, "Yeah, she's, she did this other guy," and like that's how little you care about your wow. guys' relationship. Like to me, that's that was mind blowing to me. So I mean, that's just how that that was like the mindset. You say you're asking if I really thought he meant that. Yeah, he said it publicly. Yeah, I know, but you know what I'm saying? this guy said at the beginning of the song, like I'm not gonna let my male ego get in the way i'm gonna say how i really think so Mm -hmm. that could have been his male ego it doesn't necessarily mean that he felt so little about her name was faith uh yeah that's possible but at the same time we all he would rap generously about all the groupies he was hitting and all the rest of it so it's like Okay, yeah. like she's a stable one, so you'll marry her, but you don't really not really you don't really love her like that. Like you'll have kids with her and all this and she's gonna be set for life. These other girls are just one night stands, like that was the under but you don't really she love her. She probably like, did that too to fight back. Like you don't really love her, love her like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And of course you're a woman, so you're gonna say she probably did that to fight back, but you know, whether or not she did it to fight back, that's a really fucked up thing to do to to do that with somebody who's like at war with your husband like that's some fucking disloyal shit to do yeah you know so but you know it is what it is what can you do you do? think that Tupac was doing it like like where do you think it if you were to I know that you didn't you're not you're not him so you don't know like where would you say the ticker leaned more like was it that he wanted to be with Faith or was no, it that I'm who sure Faith it was, was 100% because that she was with Big because Puff was doing, Puff did that to Tupac's girl. Oh my gosh. Puff, Puff did that to Tupac's ex-girlfriend. They were all doing that to each other. It was this incestuous, weird, you know, gross circle jerk that was happening because they are still stuck in this, like, high school mindset. Oh, I fucked your girl, blah, blah, blah. You know? So, like, that was the old, like, the honor, you know, I'm going to defend her honor type thing. And Biggie just completely destroyed that. He was like, yeah, you probably did. If she had twins, she'll probably have two two of your kids. And that just changed everything for me. Because after that, in our our crew, it was like shameful if you fought over a girl. Like, you fought over a girl, like, you're like level one. I'm not going to use the term that we use. But, like, if you would go to blows over a girl, you were mega weak in our eyes so like my best friend so weird like my best friend like he was that type of guy in love like he would he'd he'd go fight over a girl and obviously i love him so i'm just you know that's my guy but yeah yeah, like here in maine guys didn't really fight over girls but we considered that we figured that was because they were you know weak we thought that new york guys would fight over you yeah well, I, I think, but York see, guys I think, again, I think it's different up here. Dudes, like, would probably do that. But, again, in, in the context we were in, everything got escalated. So it's like, it's not, right. when you're doing that right. negotiation, it's not, this guy said something reckless, and, okay, so now I'm going to set it on this dude. But it's like, are you willing to go to war over this? Like, that's the issue. Right, and because, they can show up with a weapon when you're, yeah. Well, they got a yeah. weapon on them right then. 
They got a weapon on them right then, and so do you, most likely. Yeah. And so does your girl. See, I would... You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's really the question. I wouldn't have told you stuff. So that's, of course, a lot of girls are like that. A lot of girls are like that. And that's why a lot of them are tough, because they'll handle the shit themselves. And there's like a mutual oh. understanding. Like, if the girl handles it herself, then you don't get involved. Oh, okay. But like, all right. yeah, but th- these are all like negotiations. So like, you're not able to like have a regular relationship where you're honest with yourself and go, I really miss, like, we were hanging out with our friends, hadn't seen our friends in probably a year, hadn't hung out with them for a year. Yeah. And then like, you were gone for two seconds because you're making yourself a coffee or something. And I was like, yo, I was like looking around. They're like, yo, what's wrong with you? Like, what's your problem? And uh, it was, I was like, yo, we're sorry. And sorry hasn't been around. It felt like forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have done that in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would, you know what I mean? So it's, it's weird. Like, this song is another 10 for me. It's, this has been a very, very weird night. But I just yeah. feel like these songs are extremely risky and they're very important and they're also classical because this song made it into a a hip hop song in the in a mm. modern era and it worked yeah. perfect it yeah. worked perfectly yeah like completely I'll, I'll perfect have to hear that it's after. actually a little bit dark like the it's a, it's a bit of a dark minor key type song very simple but makes a lot of sense um yeah okay can you just put can this you put his comments up there um thank you fabrizio thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this one's a 10 for me as well. Um, that definitely is a 10. <laughs> like the video. <laughs> uh, it's a 10 I, for me. I, Revo uh, is coming with the heat tonight, man. Yeah. Yeah. Revo it, is coming with the heat tonight. I gotta say it again. I loved his intro, the way that he was saying it, like what he was saying, and just like the realness by which he was communicating it. Just really... Uh, really like that. All right, you guys. Last song up next is by Deep Purple, and we will uh, we'll see you in a couple of minutes after the commercial. 